you know, it had nothing to do with Eisenhower. No, no. Trust me, trust me. You don't want to go down there. It's very damp, very smelly. The, the smell of the mildew, it gets in your clothes. It's horrible. No, no, there, there's no accident down there. Nothing so dramatic. Oh, I did blow up a catch on fire. What's a nice girl like you doing talking about an old lady's down there for? We didn't do this kind of thing when I was your age. Oh, well, there's this boy. Andy. Oh, oh god, Andy Lovkov. Oh, he was so good looking and tall like me. He asked me out for a date, I'll never forget, in his new white Chevy Beltane. Oh god, I, I can't do this. I, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't talk to you about my down there. You know, it's, it's like the cellar. You know, you can hear the pipes, things get caught up in it, little creatures and animals and things. It gets wet, people come, they plug up the leaks. Otherwise, the door, the door stays closed. You forget about it. And, oh, oh god, Andy Lovkov. He was a catch. That's what we called him in my day. <laughs> um, so we're in his car, and all I'm thinking about are my kneecaps. I was you know, very long legs, and on my kneecaps. And they're all smushed up against the dashboard when Andy just grabs me, that take you by control kind of way that they do in the movies. And um, I got excited. I got very excited. And well, um, there is, there is, um, there is a flood, okay? A flood down there. Um, this river of life, it just forced its passion, it just flooded out of me, right through my panties, right onto the car seat of his new white Chevy Bella. Well, it wasn't me. And it didn't smell. I, I didn't think it smelled, but Andy, uh, he said, Andy said, he said it smelled like sour milk, and it was staining his car seat. And I was a stinky, weird girl, he said. I tried to explain it. His kiss had caught me off guard. I wasn't normally like this. I tried to wipe up the flood of my dress. It was a new yellow primrose dress. And it looked so ugly with found the flood on it. And Andy, he drove me home. Uh, he never, he never said another word to me again. And when I got out of his car, I tell you, I closed, I locked, I locked the store. Never opened for business again. But I used to have these dreams. I mean, they're, they're crazy dreams, silly dreams. Uh, Dopey dreams, why? Burt Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, I think I never did a thing for me in life, but there he was, always in my dreams. Burt to me, Burt and I. And we'd go out for dinner, you know, one of those restaurants, the fancy ones, like you see in Atlantic City. <sighs> these huge chandeliers, these thousands of waiters. Mm. Uh, and there, and Bert would be there. He'd give me an orchid corsage. I'd pin it to my blazer. We'd laugh. We're always laughing, Bert and I. Laughing, laughing. <laughs> we ate from cocktail. Fabulous shrimp. Huge shrimp. Uh, but then Bert, he would lean towards me. And just as he was about to kiss me, the entire restaurant it would start to shake. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> um. The entire restaurant would start to shake the pigeons, would fly out from underneath the table. I don't know what those pigeons were doing there. And then there'd be this flood. It would just pour out of me. It would pour and pour it. And these, there'd be these, these little boats, and fish would come out. And, and the entire restaurant would just fill up with my flood. And there would be Bert, <coughs> standing waist deep in it, looking horrified, horribly disappointed that I'd done it again. As he watched his friends, you know, Dean Martin, and then like swim by in their evening gowns and tuxedos. <laughs> I don't have those dreams anymore. No. Not since I took about everything connected with down there and moved out the tubes, the uterus, the whole works. And my doctor, he thought he was a real comedian. He tells me, you don't use it, you lose it. But really, it was cancer. The whole thing, it just had to go. Highly overrated anyway. I mean, I do other things. I love the dog shows. I sell, I sell antiques. Excuse me, come again? What would it wear? What kind of a question is that? What would it wear? It would wear a sign, closed due to flood. <laughs> <laughs> what would it say? It's I told you, it's not a thing that speaks. It's a place, a place, a place that you don't go. It's closed up, it's under the house, down there. You happy now? You happy you got this old lady to talk about her, this stuff? Got her to talk about this down there, you feel better? Yeah, actually, I'll tell you the truth. You are the very first person I ever talked to about this stuff, and I feel a lot better. Thank <laughs> you.